Students, in this class we are going to see SAR of quinolones. Already we have seen quinolone anti-malarials. The examples for that would be quinine, 4 amino quinolones and 8 amino quinolones. So, in this SAR we are going to see SAR of quinine, SAR of 4 amino quinolones and SAR of 8 amino quinolones. In the case of SAR of 4 amino quinolones, we are going to see the quinoline ring and aliphatic side chain and how these two are related to the activity. And in the case of 8 amino quinolones, we are going to see the quinoline ring the ring substituted derivatives and 8 amino side chain modifications and how they are related to activity. We will see one by one. So, first we are going to see SAR of quinine. So, for that we have to know the structure of quinine. So, what is the structure of quinine? It is having two heterocyclic rings. One is the quinoline ring, another one is the quinacridine ring and that two are connected by means of hydroxy methyl group. The carbon of hydroxy methyl group no, so that can be called as ninth carbon. And here we have a quinoline ring no, that is having a methoxy group in the sixth position and the quinacridine moiety is having a vinyl group in the third position. That is all about the structure of quinine. So, what is that? It is having two heterocyclic rings. One is the quinoline nucleus, another one is the quinoclidin nucleus and that two are connected by means of hydroxymethyl otherwise carbinol carbonyl okay and the sixth carbon of quinoline is having a methoxy group and the third carbon of quinoclidin is having a vinyl group. So, in the case of a quinine the quinoline ring, the quinoclidin ring and the hydroxy methyl group. So, these three are important for activity and the sixth portion it is having methoxy group no. So, that can be replaced by means of chlorine the activity would be increased. And in the second portion of quinoline, we are introducing phenyl group, the activity would be increased. And in the case of eighth portion, there may be introduction of halogen, it increases the activity. And the ninth carbon, no, that is having secondary alcohol, that can be oxidized or esterified means the activity would be reduced. So, these are about the SAR of quinine. Now we are going to see SAR of 4 amino quinolones. Already we have seen examples for 4 amino quinolones. They are chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, and ammodiaquine, etc. Okay. So here we have taken chloroquine. So what is chloroquine? So that is having quinoline nucleus and fourth portion is having amino group. So with the amino group, butyl group would be attached. And the first carbon of butyl is connected with methyl, and the fourth carbon is connected with diethyl amino group. And the seventh carbon of quinoline, no, that is having a chlorine. So, that is the structure of four, I am sorry, chloroquine. So, what is chloroquine? So, it is having a quinoline nucleus, and the seventh carbon is having a chlorine, and fourth carbon is having amino group. That amino group is connected with the butyl. The first carbon of butyl is connected with methyl, and the fourth one is connected with the diethyl amino group. We are going to see about the quinoline ring that is present in 4 amino quinolones. Here that quinoline ring node that is important for activity. If you are replacing the quinoline by means of acridine, the activity would be reduced because this quinoline node that is more active than acridine. And in the third portion of that quinoline, we are introducing alkyl. For example, if you are introducing methyl, the activity would be reduced. And with that, we are introducing additional methyl group in the 8th carbon, the activity would be abolished. And in the case of 7th portion, the presence of a chlorine no, that is important for activity. Now we are going to see about the aliphatic side chain that is present in 4 amino quinolones. Already we have seen it is having amino group in 4th portion. So, in the 4th portion, it is having dialkyl amino alkyl side chain no, so that is important for activity. This aliphatic side chain no, that should have 2 to 6 carbon atoms to maintain the anti-malarial activity. In the case of chloroquine that is having 4 diethyl amino methyl butyl amino side chain. The tertiary amine in the side chain no, so that is important for activity. If you are introducing hydroxy group in the side chain, the activity would be reduced. For example, for that is hydroxychloroquine. Next one is we are introducing aromatic ring in the side chain, the toxicity would be reduced and also the activity. The example for that is ammodiaquin. If you are introducing unsaturation in the side chain, that is not detrimental to activity. While well, comparing the structures of chloroquine, it is having two isomers. No, one is D isomer, another one is L isomer. The D isomer is less toxic than L isomer. Now we are going to see the SAR of 8 amino quinolones. Already we have seen examples for 8 amino quinolones. They are primaquine and pharmaquine. Now we will see the structure of primaquine. 
So what is that? It is having a quinoline nucleus and in that the 8th carbon no, so that is connected with amino group. That amino group is connected with butyl and the first carbon of butyl is connected with methyl and the fourth one is connected with NH2 amino group. And in the case of quinoline, the 6th portion no, that is having methoxy group. So that is the structure for primaquin. Now we are going to see the quinoline nucleus that is present in 8 amino quinolones. Here this quinoline no, so that is the common nucleus for most of the anti-malarial agents. If it can be replaced by means of phenanthrin or anthracin or naphthazin, it is having activity that is it is having schizontacidal activity. And that quinoline no, that is reduced to give one allyl 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahydroquinoline or 1 allyl 1, 2 dihydroquinoline or 5, 6 dihydroquinoline we are getting inactive compound. Next is ring substituted derivatives. Here in the case of quinoline the 6 portion is having methoxy group no, so that is important for activity. The example for that would be primaquin and parmaquin. And in the case of second carbon we are introducing benzyl oxy derivative means we are getting active compound but the activity would be less and toxicity would be less than primaquin. If you are introducing the second methoxy group at second position or fifth position, the therapeutics in a therapeutic index would be increased. And in the third position, we are introducing phenyl, we are getting less active compound with the less toxicity. If the fourth carbon is introduced by means of small alkyl or vinyl group, the activity would be increased. Example, 4 methyl primaquin is 2 times more active than primaquin with less toxicity. If the fifth carbon is oxygenated, the activity would be retained. Example, 5 phenoxy and substituted phenoxy derivatives have high tissue schizontacidal activity. Already we have seen the sixth carbon. If we are introducing methoxy group in that, the we are getting optimal activity. If that is replaced by means of ethoxy group, the activity would be reduced. If the methoxy group present in 6th position is replaced by means of chlorine, the activity would be reduced. And if you are introducing any substituents in 7th carbon, we are getting inactive compound. 2, 4 diallyl, 6 methoxy, 8 amino quinolones are less active than primaquin. 4 methyl, 5 fluoroprimaquin is having increased activity with increased toxicity. Now we will see the 8 amino side chain modifications. Already we have known it is having two nitrogens. Okay, so between the two nitrogens there may be methylenes. So that would be two to six, two to six methylenes present between the two nitrogens. That is optimal for activity. In that the methylene would be even number means that is less active than odd number methylenes. If you are introducing additional heteroatom into the basic side chain, the activity would not be improved. And the amino group present here, no, that should be secondary in nature. That's all about the essay or of quinolones. Thank you.